Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome to Kingdom Influence Network. My name is Pastor Luke and this is my wife. My uh, by the way, <laughs> we are going to be launching Rock Solid Marriages. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be counseling married people and single people, single people divorced people, divorced people complicated, people, complicated people, anything to do with marriage anything to do with relationships <laughs> So first and foremost, we are going to talk about what we have learned in the past nine years. Because nine years. today and tomorrow we are celebrating nine years. You know, we we signed the papers on the 28th of June. And we then down the aisle on the white wedding, June. white wedding <laughs> on the 29th of June. Okay, <laughs> so that's what we're celebrating today. And then we just felt in our hearts that it is time for us to start talking about the good things that we have discovered in marriage and the bad things that we have gone through in marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think one of the things that we believe is marriage is the bedrock of society. So we are very passionate about marriage relationships and one of our heart desires is to see thriving marriages. Couples that love one another yep. and actually like to live with one with another. With one another and love God, yes. obviously, because I think God is going to be the center of our topics, oh, yes. not only do we cancel but we will be canceled as well because we still receive cancel you know you can never stop learning you you can't outgrow to be taught so we still have counselors we um we we, we acknowledge that um i think in our society and communities um that people should get counsel people should get um what was what's the what's the other word uh, training or premarital counseling you should just get support and help before you indulge in such activities okay <laughs> <laughs> Before you get married. Before you get married, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah so to uh, launch this um, network, it is a network, to launch the ministry, uh, Rock Solid Marriage, we are going to be talking about the things that we have learned in the past nine years uh, as we welcome you into the ministry and into our journey. So we are sharing five things that we have learned uh, along the journey. And do you want to start? Um, well ladies first thank you mm -hmm. so uh nine years of marriage uh one of the things that i have learned is not to sweat these small things and this is so big mm. to me because growing up i was always someone that never faced issues and then when i was not confident enough when as i was grown i was not confident to face issues i started facing everything <laughs> mm -hmm. so i now had to learn what to face and what not to face yeah. so i uh so i started learning this in marriage you know i got married early um when i say early 21 for me 24 to me is early i met him when i was 21 got married when i was 24 so to me it was quite early because i had planned to get married at 29 30. so for some people 24 is normal to me it was early based on my plan so i had to learn in marriage that yes you need to face things and deal with situations but there's certain things you just need to say you know what don't worry about it don't you know leave it just let it go just let it go without facing it just let it go and that's where i'm still at i'm still learning daily to just let some things slide through and deal with what needs to be dealt with mm. wow that's that's really cool well for me i think i am in the same boat as yourself like still dealing with you know past um issues that are unresolved um still trying to actually get to a place where god is literally like cleansing you you know from past trauma past either let, let me say things that just didn't go according to plan for example um just going through that process in your marriage when you're trying to work on your marriage and then you still got like things from your past that that, that just still 
show up in your marriage. I think it's something that I, I've learned how to navigate around that, you know, with your spouse and with God um, and with the support of your community as well, um, with people that are just there as a support system. And sometimes you get to a point where you, you're stuck. Okay, you know, I've never experienced this before. How can I manage this? And then um, it's been a, quite a journey for me. Um, so yeah, looking forward to growing more. That's good. That's good. And I think one of the things that I've learned as well is for some reasons, it's as if when you get married, you know everything, mm -hmm. but then you learn that you don't. Mm -hmm. So you can be mature enough to get married but you still don't know everything just because you're married. Mm -hmm. So I believe that in the early stage, there are certain things that I just thought my husband should know, like you should know, you should know, you're married, you should know, you should know, you're an adult, you should know, you should know. But then I would not look at the fact that, hang on, there are things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this thing about, you know, the Bible says, um, before you take the needle, no, before you take the branch, this speck out of someone's eye, take the branch out of yours. Take the log, you know, take the log out of yours. Yeah. yeah. So it took me a while to actually say, hang on, you don't know everything. So why are you expecting your husband to know everything? Yeah, true. So I started having more mercy on certain things that I'm like, okay, give him an opportunity to learn. That happened. So give yourselves an opportunity to learn from that. Yeah. Because just because you get married today, it doesn't mean you're full of everything yeah, yeah, about yeah, marriage mm -hmm. certain things you're gonna have to learn on the journey and That's that true. was a big lesson to be honest yeah i think for me it was um unrealistic expectations Ooh, that's a big one. um mm -hmm. always had that that demand on my wife to say you know you gotta do this you gotta respond like this mm -hmm. you know and i wanted her to do things based on what i thought they should be done even though I've never had a conversation with her mm. and that caused a lot of you know shaking in our relationship in our friction. marriage and friction oh yeah <laughs> big time so that was one of the major things that I've realized that well wait a minute if I ever try to communicate that with her or to her if I really initiated that conversation so that I can have you know a different outcome than to expect her to respond in a certain way, but I've never communicated that to her. So we started communicating and then um, realized that, wow, there is a lot that can be achieved in just, you know, speaking to that person and it's been working well. So yeah, I'm so happy for that. Can I steal that? Because yeah, that was fine. me as well. Yeah, <laughs> I think. You can um, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think unrealistic expectations is ju is such a big thing when you get married. You just expect your spouse to just know everything about you, how you want it done, how you feel about it, how you thought you know they should know how you want them to react to mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. you know uh like you burn yourself with water you say ouch you expect your spouse to run oh why didn't you run with the yeah. plaster why didn't you mm -hmm. do this you know simple things like that but i think it's so true like what you said um so i had to learn that unless i communicated it don't expect it mm -hmm. so don't expect something you never communicated to your That's spouse mm -hmm. and even if you have communicated it give them an opportunity to learn it to master it and for it to become a second nature to you, uh, to them rather, because whatever is second nature to you, God has given you a spouse who might not have that thing as their second nature. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll both be the same. So the mm -hmm. fact that we are both different, it means there are things that I can do in my sleep, he yeah. can't. Yeah. There are things he can do mm -hmm. in his sleep, I can't. So mm -hmm. we learn and glean from each other. But yeah, yeah unrealistic expectations, boy, they can kill a marriage. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, I think the other thing was um, to demand more and you're giving less. Mm. Um, you're coming up with big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I'm, yeah, thinking I'm, trying, yeah. I'm, tr I'm trying not to wow. be too deep. But wow. like, I think um, I've learned that in most cases I was demanding quite a lot from my wife, you know, but I was giving a little, you know, like I was just giving like a mustard seed but I want the entire field from her. 
and I'll give a master's thesis. So, you know, obviously that stems out of just being selfish and not being considerate uh, that, you know, I've got a spouse who actually needs more from me who's expecting more from me in order for her for me to even reap from what i'm pouring into her so i think um over the years i've started you know doing a lot of reflection and then i pause i stop and look at what needs to be done okay how can i get 100 percent support from her or how can she back me up without her bringing arsenals that oh you haven't done this you haven't done this you haven't supported me in this da, 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 da. so i think that is it has taught me a big lesson that i have to invest more into her in order for me to have a good return of investment in what i'm actually giving to her otherwise i can i can't go to her when she's bankrupt and i'm expecting wow to have everything that I need in order for me to go and execute certain things. So that has been, you know, something that I've been really constantly trying to figure out for the past nine years. And now I'm getting to a place where I'm learning how that works and how I can do that and be able to deliver all the time, not to make it like a hit and miss. I have moments when I'm being a good dad and certain moments I'm not a good dad. I have moments when I'm being a good husband, but certain moments, you know, I, I'm just praying for that consistent, that I want to be consistent. If I'm going to be a good husband, let it just be consistent. If I'm going to be a good father, let, it, let me be consistent. I, I can't afford to be like, today I'm taking the kids, but tomorrow I don't want to hear about it. No, there has to be a consistent. So that's, that's what I mean by, you know, sometimes I don't want to just dump everything on her and then come back to her and say, oh, I need your help with this. How is she going to help me when she's so knackered mm -hmm. by the end of the day? So it's just that line of thought that make this work. And then both of us are stronger together rather than when she's working harder and I'm not, or when I'm working harder and she's not. Mm -hmm. That type of marriage does not work. Um, I think what's coming to my mind is one of the things that I think is this the fourth thing that yeah. I've learned is not to compare with those ahead of us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I learned this quite later on, probably in the last year or two, that don't compare yourself to a fifty-year-old woman and you're just, you know, in your thirties. They've gone through a lot. They've worked their life. They have done, you know, this. It, They've grown, you know, through their experiences with their husband or with their work, whatever life has thrown them. So don't expect to have the same strength of a 50-year-old when you're just, you know, because um, I think sometimes we are used to look at maybe someone who's been married for 30 years or 40 years and I'm like, wow, and expect my husband to be like that or expect me to be like that or my home to be like that. But my home is only one year old. So I had to learn to take it life easy and take it, um, not baby steps, but you know, when you say step baby steps, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that was a big lesson for me when I learned that don't compare yourself. An older woman is supposed to be pouring mm -hmm. into me, not for me to look at them and be like, I should be like that. Mm -hmm. as well. should know, I should be drawing from them, not mm -hmm. be like them. Mm -hmm. And that was big for Even me. though you will be like them when you grow up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I think my other point, what I've learned is um, our marriage is, is by faith, mm. okay? The fact that um, she's not assured that tomorrow I'll wake up next to her mm. and I'm not assured that tomorrow she'll wake up next to me. I don't, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? And I'll explain what that means <laughs> because she can decide today that she's leaving. Anything can happen today. We don't know. But I have faith that, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to wake up with her. She mm -hmm. has the same faith that tomorrow I'm going to wake up next to her. I have faith that she's not going to look for another guy and leave me. It's faith. So, <laughs> and, and, and I think, they, I'm, I'm saying this because like, um, you know, I think we've had different conversation. Oh, okay. 
you might want to build you know an empire but am i going to be your queen am i going to be your king in that empire you know you, you you might have these thoughts to say okay if we make it in life are we still going to be together yeah. so that's what i mean like we are going to get to that place by faith and having that fear and reverence for god and loving each other and then believing our promises for one another as well and honoring our vows our vows we made them under oath by faith yeah. in the fact that god will help us to be in that place in goodness and health sickness and whatever all these things we have done it by faith mm. we are mm. here nine years later it was by faith. by faith if it was by your decision ah, you would have left me now if it was by my own opinion and desires i would have you know you see what i mean yeah. so i just believe that there is a certain element of faith that has caused us to be glued to to each other mm. irrespective of what she has done what i've done what we're going through together it has been the faith and the mercy of god that has kept us together we might say all these beautiful things but if we don't acknowledge that i'm telling you we are playing games That's true. and the enemy is not joking oh, yeah. he's coming to get your marriage he's coming for it so mm -hmm. yeah that's sounds like a warning there it is a warning mm. i is... beseech you my brethren <laughs> for the mercies of god you know it is a warning honestly so that yeah true, that's my point. fifth one last point my last point, whew, um, I should come up with something big that I've learned. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot. I mean, we just picked five things, but we've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what can I share with you? One of the things that I've also learned is, to be honest, I think, I know what you said, but this is me being honest. I think I've learned that I love my husband. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have That's my last that. point. That was my last point. No, it wasn't. <laughs> No, it wasn't. <laughs> that was my last point. Come no, on, honestly, you know, though, yeah. I think um, because as you go through life, there, you have moments where you have deep searches. Like you'll be asking yourself, what am I doing here? Or God, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Or God, mm -hmm. I hate my life. Or But then when you search deep or when I had moments of searching deep within, I always come to that conclusion that I'm like, I'm here because I love mm -hmm. this guy. Like... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, the guy's, the guy's you know what I mean? Come on, look at that, man. Not yeah, that. that. Even if it was like, you guy know, got swag. Um, guy got class. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't be saying. Like, don't be saying. <laughs> I didn't even, I was blind before I met him. I didn't even know what he looked now like. You see, I didn't even yeah, know what he looked yeah, like. Oh you, yeah, know. Oh yeah. you know, I got my eyes after marriage. Mm, mm, but yeah, honestly, though, when I search deep with it, and I always, and now I see it as a privilege because I know that we still have people in the world, mm -hmm. somewhere in the world, that are being given to marriage, that are being forced into marriage, yeah, that are being, uh, what's the word, arranged marriage. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so I don't know what I would have been like if I was in that society where marriage was arranged for me and all that. So mm -hmm. now I see it as a privilege that I got to choose this guy. I got to be in love and choose love. Mm -hmm. So when I have that feeling that I actually love this person mm -hmm. it's a comforting feeling mm -hmm. so to speak in a yeah. selfish way mm -hmm. um but also in a good way and a godly way where i'm like i'm here because i love mm -hmm. you know this person yeah. and it helps me navigate you know it's helping me more than ever now to navigate some of my decisions mm -hmm. uh to be fair uh, so sometimes when i want to be cruel that deep love kind of guides me through I'm like why would you want to make someone you love cry mm -hmm. why would you want to revenge them why would you want to speak to them like that why would you want to you know not give them something that kind kill of thing <clears throat> why would you want to kill them you know, for that? And I, uh, let me not tell you the weapons I have like uh, weapons of mass destruction <laughs> hidden under somewhere mm. <laughs> that's the word of God by the way uh, um, yeah. but yeah you get what I mean mm -hmm. that it's something true, that true. along the way I have sat down and I've said to myself, I've learned that I do love this person, mm. you know, and yeah, I like, That's I like that. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm going to borrow that because you that. borrowed mine, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it, it struck me one time when I was at home and my daughter came to me and she, she said to me, uh, 
daddy where's mommy and when is mommy coming back so it hit me hard you know from a from a from an angle i think it, it pierced my heart that imagine if she was never coming back home mm -hmm. what would i have said to my four-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and my two-year-old son what were the words that were going to come out of my mouth to try to comfort her you know what sort of pain was i going to inflict on my daughter by telling her that you know what mommy's never coming home and i know that there are some children that are in that situation and i don't wish it on anyone but for the sake of love i i sat there and just tears they just started running over my face and i was like wow can you imagine if i won't i won't i, I just couldn't put it to words what i would say to my daughter that you know what mommy's not coming back home that that was something that gave me that strength within me that you know what and and I, it hit me so much that i realized that i loved my wife mm. not just because for my children's sake but that thought of not having her beside me or by me at all times i started you know meditating on that i was like wow with the thing that she does for me would I would I exchange it for anybody else? And I just couldn't see that. I just couldn't possibly see that. And it, it was just a thing where there was a lot of mixed emotions. But like the underlying thing was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I love this person, and I love this girl till death do us part because it just made me become so aware because sometimes we get numb because we're just like oh yeah go on go into your business oh yeah you, you you're back again oh here we go again you know we get to that point because life can be so busy and so hectic and fast and we don't take time out to just pause and say wait how have we managed to go through these years how have we got to this place what happened how come we don't talk how come? you know you don't see that until sometimes certain things actually shakes you and then for me i think it was a point where i i got i i, I it shook me there was nothing did happen but i think god took me on a journey where i was just like what if and then that brought me to a place where i started appreciating my wife more i started acknowledging her more i started seeing her and noticing that you know what you are valuable to me. I value you. You know, you are you are an important piece of my life. You know, you 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 you're a part of me, and I don't want to trade it for anything else. So that goes a long way, and and ever since that time, that has been just transforming me on a daily basis, and I'm growing into that. You know, I'm I, I've not perfected it, but I'm growing into that. That because because it has to be a conviction. If it's not a conviction, I'm telling you, there is a, only time will tell. If it's not a conviction, so now it, it, that reality is is hit. It has kicked in, and it's impossible for me to actually have an alternative. It's impossible for me because I've made up that my mind, you know, that okay, I accept this person the way they are. I accept her based on who she is as an individual and i'm learning who she really is according to god so that i can bring out what god has placed inside of her i can never do that if i'm judgmental i can never do that if i don't love her i can never do that when i'm not at peace in my heart concerning myself and concerning her so that's why i just believe that you know what these past 10 nine years have been very crucial See, I'm, I can't wait for the team. So they have been so so instrumental in my life, and you know. So yeah, I just hope that you know you find someone that you truly love. You know, you yes. love them. Or if you have somebody that you really love unconditionally, continue to love that person, treasure that person, affirm that person. You know, let them know that you value them. Let them know that you see them. Let them know. Sometimes as men, it's hard for us to just say that. Let them know that you see them, you know. I think I did say that to you the other day, that I see you. You're like, 
Dude, you ain't saying nothing to me yet. <laughs> but I love you. I love you so much. And, you know, happy anniversary. And, you know, guys, pray for us and pray for our marriage. Okay, so thank you. So yeah, welcome to Kingdom Influence Network. If you're just subscribing to the channel and do get on board for Rock Solid Marriage, especially if you're a married couple, uh, do get on board uh, with us. And I'm sure we will be doing like uh, a Telegram or a WhatsApp connection so that we can connect on a deeper level mm -hmm. and empower and impact one another as the Lord builds our homes. So we're praying that as you're watching this, God will perfect your home and everything that pertains to your life. So here's to rock solid marriages. All right. God bless you. Have a blast.